and welcome to Higher Education Matters. We're so glad you could tune in. This is a program that's uh, presented by the Vermont State Colleges System. I'm Jeb Spaulding, I'm the Chancellor, uh, and we use this as an opportunity to talk to viewers about all kinds of matters, a lot relating to the Vermont State Colleges System, but also higher education issues in general, issues like how can I pay for college or you know, how should I think about getting into college and what, what are the advantages of going to a two-year or four-year program. So I hope you'll find the issues that we cover of interest. I want to remind you that within the Vermont State Colleges system, we have a diversity of institutions that cover a, a lot of ground. So for example, uh, we have Community College of Vermont, which has 12 locations around the state. Uh, and about a third of the courses that are delivered by Community College of Vermont are actually delivered online. So they're accessible in person and online, if that's better for you. Uh, they have individual courses and a number of associate's degree programs. Uh, on the other end of the alphabet, we have Vermont Technical College, uh, and they have uh, two locations and a lot of locations around the state and online delivery too. So the main campus that people think of with uh, Vermont Technical College is in Randolph Center, but there's also a campus uh, in Williston, uh, and also, as I mentioned, programs that are delivered statewide, either shared space with Community College of Vermont or sometimes online. Uh, and then we have uh, Northern Vermont University, which is coming up uh, in July 1. It's a transition year. It's a, a unification of Johnson State College and Linden State College. Uh, very exciting, that unification. It's going to offer more opportunities for students. Uh, and they have a range of uh, primarily bachelor's and master's degree program, but a, a range of uh, uh, associate's degrees uh, as well. And finally, Castleton University, uh, just outside of Rutland, just a, a fantastic campus, uh, a, a really uh, a, a place that has uh, 27 NCAA sports and uh, great faculty, and that's the, that's the makeup of the Vermont State College's system. Uh, and uh, if you want to find out more about any one of the institutions within the system or how they work together, just go to www.vsc.edu. Now, with today's program, I want to welcome Dale Miller. Dale, thank you for coming on. Dale is a 1982, I think, graduate Correct. of Vermont Technical College. Is that right? That's right. So we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, about yourself and, and, and why you ended up going to Vermont Technical College and, and what, where, how you went on from there. But Dale is the senior location executive for Global Foundries, which used to be called IBM to the average layman. I'm sure it's a little more complicated than that but uh, has a, a major facility in Essex. And I, I assume that senior location executive means that you're sort of the top dog here in Vermont for uh, Global Foundries? Well, yeah, a lot of people ask me about that. And first of all, thank you for having me join you today. Um, yeah, really what it means is I, I have the, I'm the senior leader for the campus uh, externally uh, in the state of Vermont. Uh, okay. We have actually other senior leaders in the company that reside on our campus uh, okay. in different roles. Um, but that's what the senior location executive role really means. And then I also have um, I'm an executive role for uh, manufacturing operations for the semiconductor fab that's right. on our facility. Okay, that's great. So listen, I also should mention that Dale, uh, not only is he an, an alum of Vermont Technical College, but he is going to be inducted into the Vermont State College's Hall of Fame uh, on uh, Thursday, March 15th. And that's a very exciting event. It'll be your first time going, but it's a full house. It's held at the uh, Capitol Plaza, and uh, we have uh, you know, uh, former Governor Jim Douglas is returning for the third year in a row as our Master of Ceremonies. Uh, Governor Phil Scott will be there. Uh, students will be there. Uh, bank executives will be there. All kinds. It's, uh, the union representatives will be there. It's a, it's a wonderful overflowing evening and very inspirational when we find out you know, some of the interesting people that come out of the Vermont State Colleges. So, you know, Dale, I'm going to talk more about you in this program, but also this year uh, we're inducting a fellow by the name of Mark Vallade, who happens to be the CEO of Carhartt, uh, mm -hmm. and he went to Linden State College. Um, you know, we've inducted a Jim Cantori from uh, the, the Weather Channel, uh, who was also an alum of, of, uh, of Linden. We've uh, done John Casella. Last year we had uh, from Vermont Tech a fellow by the name of Jay Fayette, who is now the I think he's chief operating officer for PC Construction, the largest construction company in the, in the state. Uh, and it's just, a, and, and this year again we're doing, we have community activists and all kinds of people that come out of our colleges, and the Hall of Fame event is a way to kind of celebrate that and help people understand 
what we mean to the state of Vermont as, as, as essentially the extension of the K-12, pre-K-12 system into the, into the uh, post-secondary years. You know, I mentioned, I won't go back and re-mention the state colleges, and I know this is not meant to be just a, a sales pitch for the state colleges, but you know, we confer more bachelor's and associate's degrees every year than all of the other colleges and universities combined. So if you added up, you know, whatever, Champlain, St. Michael's, UVM, Middlebury, Norwich, Goddard, Green Mountain College, all of them, more degrees, bachelor's and associate's degrees are conferred by the Vermont State Colleges system. So we like to, you know, brag about the, the people that come out of our system, and you're one of them, Dale. So tell us your story. You're, you're a Vermonter, right? I am. So I, I wasn't born in Vermont, but I, I came here uh, at the age of two, and what brought us to Vermont was my dad got hired by IBM. Oh, really? Okay. The campus that I now work on. Right. Um, so that's kind of cool. Okay. Um, you know, clearly it's an honor to be uh, uh, selected and inducted into the Hall of Fame and joining the others uh, that came before me. So I'm really looking forward to next week. Yeah. So uh, thank you for that. Um, and I should have said on that one, Dale, like, like if there are viewers that are interested in uh, buying a ticket and coming, I, the best thing you can do is call Harriet at 802-224-3001. We may have a waiting list now, so I can't guarantee that you can get in. But if you're interested, call Harriet, and there's at least a 50-50 chance uh, you'll get on the waiting list and get in. So it's a great event. If you can come, that would be wonderful. Dale, back to right, you. No problem. Um, one thing I'd like to share uh, with the audience, um, you, know, you mentioned the degrees that the Vermont State Colleges uh, put out uh, on an annual basis. Um, if I just look at our work and workforce at Global Foundries at the Essex Junction facility, we have over 400 graduates uh, from Vermont State Colleges. That's amazing. Uh, of which 300 of those are from Vermont Technical College. Right. You know, we are a technical business by nature, right. so a natural fit there. Right. But uh, just to show that uh, we've taken advantage right. of the students across the state. Uh, over the years. And you were mentioning uh, recently there was a, a job fair where you had a good, good, good yes, turnout? Yes, uh, just this week, uh, a good job fair with VTC, and uh, my understanding is we have 25 applicants. Right. Um, we have openings uh, in many disciplines. Um, we are a large facility. Um, we have different disciplines. Uh, most of it tends to be engineering and technician based. Okay. Um, we have production operators that we train internally. Uh, so some people come to us uh, with d um, degrees that may not fit our technical degrees, but then uh, come in and get started in manufacturing and then grow from there. So okay. um, there's that opportunity. We have supply chain disciplines, uh, facilities, and equipment engineering. So I um, notice when I, when I drive by the main entrance in Essex Junction, it, usually there's a sign that says, we are hiring or something like that. So yes. you're, you're, you, are you, are you, do you have a hard time filling uh, the positions that you'd like to fill or, or it's clearly been a challenge for yeah. us um, you know we we've been predominantly hiring um, production operators okay. uh, for the semiconductor fab and um, our test facility and the mask house those are our three manufacturing legs uh, on the site campus um, it's been a challenge you know unemployment in Vermont is low and um, and people have choices so right. you, you got to make it uh, worth their while and right. that they can see that they can have a career. Uh, so why we work with Vermont State Colleges. You know, on the professional side, uh, we are hiring there as well. We, we, we hire engineering disciplines predominantly, supply chain, right. uh, some finance. Um, so, yeah, we have openings right. across the board that we're currently trying to fill. Okay. You know, so an interesting thing with the, when, when I talk to empl employers, uh, like, for example, PC Construction, they say, I wish we could hire more of the students from Vermont Tech. It's one of the interesting things, M mainly even with just an associate's degree at Vermont Tech, it's pretty pretty likely you're going to end up with a, a good-paying job. So it's, uh, and, and actually, that's my journey. Right. So if, if I kind of characterize uh, my journey uh, with VTC to where I sit today, um, you know, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do in high school. Um, I thought I wanted to be a pilot. I wanted to be... Uh, maybe a, a, a athletic trainer, um, and uh, you know my dad worked for IBM, so I knew the jobs that they were typically looking right. for there, and, and technician positions were something that they were always looking to fill. I knew that they typically hired from VTC in those yeah. days, yeah. Um, so I decided to give that a shot and say, you know, almost a guaranteed job, right. 
Um, matter of fact, I, I'm pretty sure that VTC's placement rate still remains high to this day Very high, at yeah. like 98%. So yeah. they continue to place uh, many of their students, uh, most of their students. They actually hit 100% a year or so ago. Oh, that's that's whatever it's, you know, 97 to 100%. It's, yeah. it's pretty amazing. So It's impressive. And so just out of curiosity, did you, where, where'd you go to high school? So I went to high school at Mount Mansfield. Okay. So I grew up in Richmond, yeah. Vermont. Okay. Um, and, and, and was your father... Uh, in engineering or technology at IBM or, or some he, other He had uh, multiple roles, mostly okay. in uh, uh, management, production, quality positions. Okay. Um, and my mom actually worked there as well. She worked in manufacturing huh. for years. And were they, were they still working there when you started working? I, they were, as a matter of fact. Yeah. So that was kind of fun to, yeah. to work in the same business as your as your mom and dad. Although it was probably pretty big. You might not have run into them on a daily basis. Yeah, you're right. You? No, it was, uh, you know, back in those days, we had multiple off-site campuses too. So when I started, I was actually off the main site campus. Right. Um, so yeah, it was fun times. Okay, so, you know, Vermont Technical College is one of your feeders for, for your students. And, you know, what are the kind of, you know, Vermont Tech or otherwise, and you mentioned you have so many, a variety of different jobs, but what are the kind of educational skills and attributes that you're looking for when when you're you're hiring new sure. employees so you know in the in the technician um, positions you know we love the two-year student we think that's okay. the perfect fit um, okay. because they can come in and start working on equipment um, with some training we train all our techs as well yeah. they get personalized training but then what's nice is a lot of the techs continue their education after yeah. the two-year degree and Global Foundries, in this case, and IBM previously also um, provided assistance, uh, right. education assistance to continue your education. That's what I did as a, as a student. Right. And many of my VTC fellow, fellow peers that I work with today uh, did the same. But even if you didn't continue education, there's still different career paths. And that's right. one of the nice things that uh, the two-year degree can do for you is you can try it out, see if right. it's something you like, adjust. Right. Um, so we really promote the two-year degree um, okay. for our technician positions. And then, you know, the engineering positions, they require Bachelor of Science equivalency right. um, for that. Um, and uh, we have a very variety of different engineering disciplines right. that we, we go after, you know, right. industrial engineering, equipment, process, chemical, to right. name a few. So this is a good time to take a little deviation to talk about affordability of a college mm -hmm. degree for a second. And I... I want to focus on something you mentioned, which is you hire a lot of people with a two-year degree, which they have at, at community college, at, at Vermont Technical College, and, and all of our colleges have that two-year degree. But people worry about, can I afford for my children to go get a college education? So at Vermont Technical College, they also have something called the Vermont Academy of Science and Technology. And what that is, it's, a, it's what you do in your senior year of high school. So you combine your senior year of high school and your first year of college. And uh, the, there is no tuition charge for that. Basically, the state reimburses Vermont Tech at a sort of a discounted level. But, so a student can in their, you know, finish their senior year of high school and have finished their first year of a degree program at Vermont Tech. So there's 50% reduction in the tuition cost for that associate degree program. So if they get their associate's degree, in one more year after high school, and they start at Global Foundries, uh, and then they want to go and pursue a, a, a bachelor's degree, and maybe even further than that, there is some assistance from the employer, Global Foundries or, or anybody else. So I guess my message is to the, to the viewers, look, I know college is expensive, but if you think ahead and plan ahead and get creative, there are ways where you could cut the cost substantially. And I, I, I really hope not too many families are making a decision in advance to say, gee, my children or I can't go to college because I can't afford it without looking at the, the opportunities that you can actually lower the cost. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. And I, and I think, you know, people should consider that option because it's a way to get yourself in the door, have a good paying job, and then explore further education and getting assistance to do it. And many companies do that today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm sure you know, obviously we can't do that for every employee comes in the door, so we have a prioritization process. And uh, But people, most times than not, if people are interested in continuing their education, right. we work with them to facilitate that. Yeah. So it is an opportunity to balance the cost out of pocket and let your employer help you because that's a win-win situation. Not only do you get to continue to learn 
and grow your education, but you get to utilize that in the place that you work, which benefits the company. Right, that's great. So I had a, a, a question about, uh, if it's okay to ask a question about global foundries. Sure. And it's, it's about global foundries, but also, you know, big employers everywhere today. And, you know, there's a perception, and I think there's probably some truth to it, whereas in the old days, and I did, I'm just trying to get your read on this. In the old days, when you went to work for IBM, you know, you you could kind of think, or, or General Motors, whoever it was, that it was like, you know, this is a career, a long time thing. And now there's a perception that, hey, you know, you shouldn't be planning on longevity at any of these bigger big employers because they lay people off or there's, there's just no uh, loyalty like the way there used to be. And maybe loyalty might not even be the right word, Dale, but you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And what's your take on that as, a, as an executive at Global Foundries? I mean, is it a good place for people to think of as a career opportunity, like, you know, over a long period of time or... Or, or not? Yeah, so my personal opinion... You've been there for a long time. Yeah, but. <laughs> 35 years, so it's, it goes quick. Um, clearly, you know, what we see in our industry and other industries is that the, the new generation coming into the workforce um, tends to want to bounce around and try different things. That's just the way it is. Yeah. So as an employer, you have to recognize that and, and plan for that in your hiring practices and in your training practices, right. et cetera. But I personally think, you know, some of the larger companies have a benefit to offer in that there's multiple careers within those businesses. Okay. Um, if I use myself as an example, I've had over 10 different positions uh, in my career at IBM right. and Global Foundries. And the beauty of that is in each one of those, I've learned different things right. and expanded my knowledge base to allow myself to grow to where I am today. So within the large, that's one of the benefits of a right. larger company is you can do different roles all within that company and, uh, and, and grow your career that way. But it is clearly not the norm. Right. Um, but we would like to think that people um, will take advantage of that opportunity when they work for us. So that's it's a good point because, you know, you hear these things, uh, these sort of statistics that, gee, the average person is going to have like, you know, I don't know what it is, you know, right. eight different careers in their lifetime or eight different jobs in their lifetime. But, you know, at a, at a, at a larger employer, you can actually have eight different careers within the same employer. You know? Exactly. So, and one of the important things is, is knowing that is you want the experience for the employee to be a positive one. So if they choose to leave, yeah. then they might come back. And we've seen that in, in multiple cases where people have left to go explore something else and then they've chosen to come back and it was a good relationship when they left and we'd love to bring them back if we, right. if we have the openings. And that's happened multiple times for us. So uh, that's a win-win as well. Right. And uh, a, a question, Dale. Do you ever hire uh, new employees that don't have any kind of degree, associates or, or bachelors? Yes, so in, uh, in our production uh, roles, uh, high school, you have to be a high school graduate yeah. or GED, and then uh, we train you from there. So okay. yeah, we fire quite a few of those. Okay, and what kind of skills are you looking for there? So the primary skill is, is you, know, you know, basic math is helpful. Right. Um, being able to read and speak English yeah. is, is important for us. Um, lang uh, English as a second language s can sometimes be a challenge, right. uh, so we have to work through that. Um, but basically, it's being able to be on your feet. It's a it's a twelve hour shift right. position, our, our our entry level positions, um, and you you the schedule is different uh, than the traditional five two Monday through Friday role. So you work a a, uh, a Monday, Tuesday, you have Wednesday, Thursday off, and then you have Friday, Saturday, Sunday as your next work day. So it's a 3-2-2-3 three, two, two, three rotation. Okay, yeah. And then we also are a 24 by 7 business, so That's we're amazing. always operating. Mm -hmm. So we have night teams as well, yeah. and it's the uh, same 12-hour schedule, but the schedule is uh, on four days, off three days, off four, th three days, okay. off four. So it, it rotates 3-4-4-3. Three, four, four, three. So it's a little different than the day shift, but basically... If you, if you graduate high school with a diploma and uh, you have a good work ethic, we would love to give you an okay. opportunity and, and see if it's a match. Okay, and where I'm sort of leading with that is to say that, okay, you know, people think of colleges as offering diplomas, either associates, bachelors, masters, mm -hmm. PhDs, uh, you know, and, and, and we do that. Um, but increasingly, um, the, the state college system and, and uh, you know UVM and others too and 
in particular, Vermont Tech and Community College of Vermont are looking for ways to provide uh, meaningful certificates or credentials that indicate that you know you have some some set of skills. And so we're looking to say, okay, well, when we look at the future of higher education, uh, you know, there's no question about the value of a college degree economically Correct. and health-wise, and you know all the things that it does to provide value. But not everybody needs a college degree. So what kind of skills and training and certifications do they need? And you know, we're we're very active in trying to say, okay, for example, uh, Community College of uh, Vermont has a new certified bookkeeper program. It's a national certification, and you know, if you were going to work for the state or, you know, GE or something like that, having that certification can really help. And my understanding is that uh, that Global Foundries, you know, starting with IBM and then Global Foundries has had a relationship with uh, Community College of Vermont. And I was wondering whether you could tell me a little bit about that. I thought it was some kind of a certified production technician or something like that, no, where they actually get some kind of certification. And I wanted to... Yeah, you're absolutely right, Jeb. So, so we did work with CCV. They were a great partner in this. Um, we uh, had the classes held on our campus, so we provided the space uh, because many of our current employees took advantage of it in yeah. this case. And we, uh, when they graduate, so basically it's focused on production topics, quality topics, um, and uh, safety topics right. in, those, in the manufacturing production space. Right. And they graduate with a certificate that says that if they've been through this program, they uh, acquire 12 college credits that they yeah. can put towards a future degree if they should so yeah. choose to do so. And, uh, and, and back to our earlier discussion, you know, if they're a current employee, they would be able to take advantage of um, our education assistance program to uh, facilitate that further education. Right. So it's a good way for them to start trying to see if the college coursework is something that they're interested in, the topic is interesting to them, and then tailor their next steps beyond that. So it, it's a great program that CCV um, has uh, uh, with regards to offering this to people that may not be sure about right. college. And and then CCV, uh, you know, does a, for example, they have a, a tailored program with some hospitals out there where they actually take people and work with them for, you know, a, a relatively short period of time and they end up with a certificate and a job at hospitals that are you know lower than a an associate's degree. Vermont Tech does the uh, registered apprenticeship program for plumbing and electrical and mm -hmm. a lot of those trades are pretty good paying jobs so you know I guess I'm just sort of advertising a little bit that yes we do degrees but we also look for ways that where we can add value uh, to Vermonters in, in, in ways that might be uh, not a degree at the time, but getting credit so that when they, if they do want to go into an associate's or bachelor's degree program, they've they've earned something that helps them to, to get there. And if people are interested, uh, you know, it's it's really easy. You could go to the, the Vermont State College's uh, system website, which is just vsc.edu, and you'll see the pictures of you know Castleton Community College. You can go there and find out what they offer in degree programs, certificate programs, and. Uh, and, and, and uh, you know, come for a visit sometime. So just wanted to sort of get out there that, you know, yep, degrees, but also increasingly we're looking for ways to just uh, help Vermonters uh, add value so that they can get a, a, a good, meaningful, and hopefully well-paying job. Yeah, and, and Jeb, I, w I would add to that that I, I find that the Vermont State Colleges in general have been very willing to work with industry um, on these kinds of things. Another example is you know there's a years ago we worked with VTC to do a similar thing centered around uh, creating a bigger population of technicians we, there was a, a shortage right. and uh, not only were v, was VTC having their normal program but we had a program that was created so that we could train um, our own employees uh, in that discipline and skill set such that uh, we could increase our base of that skill um, we're actually looking at doing something like that again with VTC, and they are always open to that dialogue and approach uh, to help business and also help the community uh, have an opportunity there. All right. Well, great. So listen, we don't have too much more time, so I, I was hoping we could just spend a couple of minutes talking about global foundries in Vermont, and, and you know, without getting into trade secrets, and I, mm -hmm. I, it's a pretty, you can't do that, I understand, but you know, what's the difference for you 
working for Global Foundries instead of IBM? I mean, is there, is there any difference at all or is it just a change in name? You know, for the most part, I mean, our mission is the same as it was when we were IBM as it is now, but one of the, the benefits um, we have as being part of Global Foundries is we're part of a semiconductor company. Okay. So Global Foundries has five major, soon to be six major locations around the world. So it's a global company. Yeah. Uh, all of those locations are semiconductor fabs. Right. So ours is one in, in here in Vermont. We have two in New York, one in East Fishkill, New York, and one in Malta. Uh, Dresden, Germany is another location for us, and then okay. in Singapore. Right. Uh, and then our newest fab is being built in uh, China. Huh. Oh, so we are a, a global business, right. and you know, the history of our site, so we just celebrated actually last year our 60th year in the state of Vermont. And you know, the years with IBM were very good. There was transitions of different things over those 60 years. But one of the key benefits for us is that we are now a part of a family uh, that focuses on what we do, and that's right. been very helpful to us. Right. Okay, yeah, that's great. I mean, it's interesting what you said because IBM, uh, great company, but you know, you think of it back in the old days. Those of us that don't pay attention to you know every little transition, think of computers. But uh, IBM became a and still is a, a very diverse company, consulting and all kinds of things that it does. Whereas Global Foundries, you're in the semiconductor business, so. Yep. And uh, hopefully you'll have a, uh, a long stay here in Vermont as Global That's Foundries. That's our goal, so, absolutely. Yeah, and the Vermont State College just wants to do everything we can to make sure that uh, you have the, uh, the workforce that you need. Uh, we hope we're turning them out at the, uh, at, the, uh, at the college level, but also when they're working with Global Foundries, we want to help there too. So we're with you all the way. Uh, and I want to thank you for coming in, Dale. Well, you're thank a you good, for having you're me. a good example of uh, what we turn out at the Vermont State Colleges. Uh, I, I mentioned that we've got you know d diverse institutions within the system, uh, and I think people can oftentimes find that they can get more by going to one of our Vermont State Colleges than going out of state. And it's amazing to me that you know roughly half of the students that are graduating from high school and going to college are going out of state and many of them don't realize what we have to offer and the diversity. So, you know, just as an example, if you went to, you know, uh, Northern Vermont University in Johnson, you can go spend a year at any one of hundreds of colleges and universities across the country or world at the same in-state tuition you pay at Johnson. So you don't have to go out of state to college to get a worldly experience. And we're trying to, you know, sort of encourage people, hey, give us a, a first look. And that's part of what our Hall of Fame event is. Uh, you know, one more time, if you want to come, I just call 802-224-3001. Ask Harriet if you can get a ticket and, uh, and, and come see Dale there. So, Dale, <laughs> I want to thank you again. Uh, keep up the good work. We're proud that you're an alum of Vermont Technical College, and uh, we'll, we'll talk again. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. Appreciate it. Yeah.